Alright, this video I'm going to take the opportunity to speak about Wing Chun, Ji Kune Do, and Tai Chi according to my understanding of what I feel that it means um, and how it's being used, the labels, and what I think is happening right now as far as the use of the terminology. I just thought about it today, you know, those three arts are supposed to be a symbol of the Chinese martial arts as a whole. So the Chinese martial arts can be labeled either just the Chinese martial arts or sometimes people go into Kung Fu or Gung Fu. Um, but Gung Fu is a greater representation of not just the martial arts but kind of like the entirety of the Chinese like way of being and lifestyle. In addition to the martial arts, wushu is just terminology to represent the Chinese martial arts. But Wing Chun, as what I've um, found out, this you know has been it's been around for over 400 years. And Ji Kune Do, Bruce Lee, um, he died about 50 years ago. He's the one who created that. And Tai Chi, I don't know exactly how long that, how old that system is, but um, I'm guessing that it's probably longer or dates further back than the Wing Chun, maybe, maybe a thousand years or something, I don't know how many years, but um, basically what I think people are trying to do, why Wing Chun is so popular is because I feel that the Wing Chun, you know, first it was created by a woman, that's something that is factual, you know, created by a woman and then eventually, um, you know, promoted and marketed through the influence of her husband and they just kept going from there. So the system was for women, created by women for women, um, and it's more basic. Jeet Kune Do is something that we're more familiar with because Bruce Lee didn't die too long ago. There's videos out there with him. I mean, there's movies out there with him and there's books everywhere. So we have a more clear understanding of what Jeet Kune Do is because of technology and we can see who is a real Bruce Lee who was the real Bruce Lee compared to people who are impersonating him um, we could we could see what are his real writings are compared to people who are writing um, their own interpretations about him uh, and then we have you know, technology to decipher between real Ji Kune Do, real Bruce Lee, and fake Ji Kune Do, and fake Bruce Lee. Um, but with Wing Chun, well, over 400 years ago, being created from another country outside of the U.S. by a woman, um, there's going to be a lot more um, corruption, a lot more misunderstandings, and just the, the passing along of information that's not accurate. Um, and just open up to much more corruption. So, Tai Chi, um, similar. But what I see is what's going on is people, the reason why Wing Chun is so popular is because it's a beginner's system. And from my experiences teaching the martial arts for, um, you know, for a long time, probably been teaching for 24 years. Um, and what I notice is that majority of the people that I encounter, 98% of the people I encounter, um, are beginners. Um, may, and and I, don't, I don't promote the competition fighting, so I don't work with fighters, and I don't, I don't um, attract that type of energy towards me. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't advanced athletes out there that practice martial arts. Um, but they, they just don't gravitate towards me. Most of the people that gravitate towards me are beginners. So Wing Chun, the system, is designed for beginners. And that's what Bruce Lee started off with, the beginner system. It's kind of like learning like the alphabet of the martial arts. But as Bruce Lee started to develop athletically and developing his intelligence and just life experiences and, and sparring and... and world experiences and meeting different people, different cultures and, you know, meeting people in America, training with people in America, training people in, with, in China, with people in China, um, it, it got him to grow beyond the beginners and develop something that is very, um, 
you know, very comprehensive and very, um, you know, like a very high level, you know, system. I know he, he didn't call his way a system, but his way was definitely beyond the beginners, beyond the intermediate. It was advanced. It was something that's for more Olympic level training, you know, like, and, you know, athletes that are like the best athletes in the world. That's, that's what Jeet Kune Do represents. And that's the thing. That's why Jeet Kune Do is not as popular in America or in China, not only because it's harder to um, deceive people into believing that what they're teaching is real Jeet Kune Do, not only is that a barrier because of technology, because people could this, could know, you know, this is not Bruce Lee, so this is not real Jeet Kune Do, or just like they could say that this is not a real Bruce Lee movie, that's not really Bruce Lee, they could eventually see that they're not learning real Jeet Kune Do because they're being deceived but not only is it that but very few people in this world can can be able to express the martial arts the way that Bruce Lee was expressing it and have their expression of their the, the Jeet Kune Do very few people in the population you're talking about probably less than 1% of the population so you cannot make you cannot make a, a first of all he says it's not a system. Second of all, it's developed for people that are very highly developed, not just physically, but also spiritually, meditatively, emotionally, um, mentally. Everything is so, so, so at a high level that um, it's just not built for the masses. So the evolution of Bruce Lee came from the practice of Wing Chun, which is like the beginner's level, to the development and creation of the Jeet Kune Do. And that's where he passed away. Now, if he continued to live and say he's 85 years old now, then his expression could have um, transformed into the Tai Chi. So his expression stopped at Jeet Kune Do, but just like everybody else, you know, he would get old. He would, his speed wouldn't be, he wouldn't be as fast. Um, he might get some illnesses, maybe some diseases maybe some cancer, um, but whatever the case may be, he's going to, you know, through time, his body's going to change. And he's not going to be a beginner anymore, but he's not going to be like an Olympic type of athlete anymore. He's going to be turning into more of a, what Tai Chi is known for right now, which is more of an expression for the elderly or people that are older generation. So it would have been Bruce Lee's expression of the Tai Chi. So Bruce Lee being a Chinese American, um, he was beginning with the Wing Chun, then it developed into the Jeet Kune Do, and if he continued to live, then it would have become the Tai Chi. You know, and um, it's just a difference of label based on his progression in life. That was his Kung Fu. Now whatever he decided to call it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, it's his own expression but what does matter is just the understanding is the only reason why people know of Jeet Kune Do is because Bruce Lee became famous and then he was the one who let the people know about Wing Chun and then that gave more uh, recognition and fame for the Wing Chun system now Tai Chi has been known you know through um, various different movies maybe pr promoted by Jet Li or some some other Chinese movies um, coming out of China people kinda have an idea of what a slight idea of what Tai Chi is but basically it is an individual expression of a Chinese martial arts master you know he will evolve from beginner to advanced and then to old age and that's represented from the Wing Chun beginner, the Jeet Kune Do advanced like potential, like the Olympic level expression, and then finally to old age and the Tai Chi expression. Um, we just were not able to witness Bruce Lee get into the old age and see that expressive side of him as as an 80 year old or 90 year old or 100 year old. 
Um, but that's essentially the process that I see that's going on. And the people, when they're advertising and marketing these systems, they're saying Wing Chun because they're pretty much saying, okay, Kung Fu for beginners. When they say Ji Kune Do, they're kind of trying to say, well, this is advanced Olympic level um, Kung Fu for the really highly developed individuals. And then when they're saying Tai Chi, they're trying to say, well, this is, you know, the Kung Fu for the older people that, um, that are close to retirement or people that are not able to do what they used to do in the past. So Bruce Lee was definitely capable of teaching all three facets. Um, once you get to the Jeet Kune Do level, you could obviously teach the Wing Chun level if necessary. And you could also teach the Tai Chi level if necessary. But you only have so much time in a day, you know, to teach people, you know. So, and when you're focused on one area, if he's focused on the Jeet Kune Do, um, you know, it's going to be hard to focus on the Wing Chun and then focus on the Tai Chi because there's just too many things going on at once. But he had the capability of going from either level and teaching the beginners, the highly advanced, and the people who are older. Um, but that's what I s essentially see that's going on. And people are using these, these labels um, essentially as a way to pretty much just identify, you know, to me it's just an identification. You know, when people come to my school, it's like, do you want beginner's training? Do you want advanced training or do you want more of just a relaxed meditative training? So the beginner's training is the Wing Chun, you know, um, the advanced training is the Jeet Kune Do, and then the relaxed training is the Tai Chi. Um, it's just that these people are using these labels as f for marketing purposes, and then what and the pe people get in this misconception that they're actually training this art when it's not being properly labeled. They're essentially just training in a beginner's version of Kung Fu from whoever they're trying to learn from or they're learning an advanced version of Kung Fu from whoever they're trying to learn from or they're learning a more relaxed meditative version of Kung Fu from whoever they're trying to learn from. And that's the thing about these labels is that every single label that I mentioned, the Wing Chun, the Jeet Kune Do, the Tai Chi, the creators of these labels have passed away many, many years ago. So people are stealing labels and using labels of which they didn't create or labels of which they, they, could, they did not get permission to use and could not even get permission to use and they're using it for marketing purposes and further um, confusing the public into what is actual Wing Chun, what is actual Jeet Kune Do, what is actual Tai Chi. People are being misinformed essentially what it is is that you know what I see is that there has to be a living Chinese master in the martial arts and once you encounter that living Chinese master in the martial arts then he could teach you the different expressions of that that Kung Fu his Kung Fu based on where you're at he can share with you the beginners level Kung Fu the advanced level Kung Fu or the meditative level Kung Fu and that's pretty much how I see it.